Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. And we are once again for another Tuesday night 
Bible class with Bishop Coleman, pastor of Greater Pentecost Church of God. And also I have uh, evangelist Jean Moore also with us again uh, tonight. And she is our Christian education director. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I'm all charged up and ready to go. She's all charged up because we got a very exciting class for you. Once again, for the last few weeks, we've been talking about the high priest. Amen. We are taking the time out just to extract out of the word of God and talking about the priest, this garments, the role of a priest and the function of a priest and his job, his responsibility in the temple and how he served God's people, how he was a mediator, how he was an intercessor between God and man. Now, before we move forward, I want you to call somebody, connect with somebody, join in with us, have a watch party because this is a very exciting class. We even got a mannequin here and we've been calling him Aaron, the high priest, and we want you, amen, to go along with us because we got a very exciting lesson for you today. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you as we go into your word on tonight. Bless your people, bless your hearers, and let us receive something here and take away something, Lord, to help us, Lord, even, Lord, our journey, even our walk with you, oh God. I pray for those ones that are watching by YouTube and by Facebook Live. I pray you will bless Sister Jean more today as she comes along and teach this lesson with us today. And all those ones that are it's a part of this audience, that are part of this taping, oh Lord, we pray and we ask these things in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Now, for a foundational um, scripture tonight, I'd like for you to go with me to Exodus, the 28th chapter, verses 2 through 5. I'm going to repeat that again. Exodus, the 28th chapter, verses 2 through 5. Mm -hmm. Sister Jean, would you like to read that for us? Do you have it? Five, Exodus 28. Speak loud to our audience. Five. All right. And it reads, make, and I'm reading from the BSB Bible, and it says, make holy garments for your brother Aaron to give him glory and splendor. You are to instruct all other skilled craftsmen whom I have filled with a spirit of wisdom to make garments for Aaron's consecration so that he may serve me as priest. These are the garments that they shall make. A breast, plea, a breast piece, mm -hmm. an ephod, a robe, a woven tunic, a turban, and a sash. They are to make these holy garments for your brother Aaron and his sons so that they may serve me as priests. They sh they, verse 5, they shall use gold mm -hmm. along with blue purple and scarlet yarn and fine linen. Amen. Now, tonight, we're going to talk about the garments that the priest wore, or maybe back up and say the high priest wore, who was Aaron. We told you in the previous lesson that there was only one high priest, one high priest, and there were priests, which were the sons of Aaron. Now, when you come down to the garments, you will find out that I said earlier that it's, it was a significance to it, which we'll get into, but it specified his office that he was in because what Aaron wore was, was quite different from what his sons wore to distinguish that he was the high priest and not just the priest. Okay, so now here we are. Now, I was, I was speaking to my daughter when I was working on this lesson. I said, I didn't realize that God was a designer of clothes. I mean, really. And, he's, and he designs down to the detail, down to the stitching, down to the colors. And it shows us that's the way he wanted. Pacific. I mean, with specific colors, specific garments. It was, I mean, all the way down to the letter. That's the way he wanted and if you notice that he told Moses, this is the way I want it done. Mm -hmm. And then, then he also had to have some craftsmen or some centuries mm -hmm. how to, to sew this up. Mm -hmm. And it was very specific even with that, how it should be sold up. Yeah. 
You just gonna say something? No, no. Oh. I was, I was agreeing with you. You know, because God was a very specific God. Uh huh. He told Moses do it just like I, I, I instructed to do. Mm hmm. He told Moses. He told all through there. You hear him telling Moses, "Do it as even with the tabernacle." He said, "Do it as I have instructed you to do. Don't deviate." And if just one, just think about that. If one piece of the garment was off mm -hmm. or the color wasn't right, mm -hmm. things wouldn't go right mm -hmm. in the order the way God wanted in the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And because he had to be specific. Now notice verse number two. Notice verse number two. And thou shalt make not just garments, but he's told them to make holy garments. Mm -hmm. That the, Number one, these garments that the priest, the high priest would wear, would be used that he would be set apart. Mm -hmm. That these garments be set apart specifically to the high priest. Mm -hmm. Holy garments. Now here, for Aaron, thy brother. And he says what? For, for glory mm -hmm. and for beauty. Mm -hmm. Amen. Two, for two reasons. Now, to today's world, uh, in the church, some church folks say, that's just too much. <laughs> that's just going too far mm -hmm. when it comes to garments, yeah. uh, to the clothing or to the attire. I don't think it take all that. Mm -hmm. But God wanted that priest to stand out. Yeah. He wanted him to be different from the priest. And the other case of it was that it also showed amen, to the people that the priest is somebody. He's not just anybody. He's just, he's somebody. Mm -hmm. And he would stand out before the people. Y'all ain't going to talk back to me today. And, and, and then also, amen, it's a reference to Christ Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. Amen. Also, it's a reference because we are called to be priests mm -hmm. and kings. Amen. We should stick out. Not that we got our chest all stuck out, amen, because we save and we feel and we're holy, but we are different. We, that's why the Bible talks about us being a peculiar people, amen, somebody special. So the high priest, certainly he was somebody special because he was one that will offer, what, the sacrifices for the sins of God's people. So it was somebody special, somebody different. OK, and also it was significance also because of his holiness, yeah. the beauty of God's holiness. And when you look at these garments and I thank God for one of our precious members here, uh, Nicole, uh, she went. I mean, we know when she sold all this up, put this all together, she went to the Bible. Yeah. She called me several times and said, Pastor, I want to do it just like the word, just like the Bible, uh -huh. just the way God's. God planned it for it to be uh, the plan outline. And man, she put it together too. She put it together. And you can just imagine, we weren't there in that time, but you can just imagine how beautiful the clothing that this high priest wore. My, my. God represented it. That's it. And uh, so here it is. He said, for glory and for beauty. And the, verse number three says, for thou shalt speak Unto all that are wise hearted, mm -hmm. whom I fill with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments, Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me mm -hmm. in the priest's office. Yes. Now, now, what do you get out of that? That he had to have what? Special garments to minister or to serve before God. Mm -hmm. He could, couldn't come any kind of way. That's right. I mean, any kind of uh, garment, any kind of way. He couldn't put the garments he want to put on. That's right. And sometimes, you know, I want to wear this because yeah. I got this from Bloomingdale. I got this from Saks right. Fifth Avenue. You know, sometimes we want to do things our way. We want to dress our way. Change all the time. Right. You know, change shoes and change hairdo, all that, amen. But God said, no, amen, I want these garments to be made for Aaron this way. I want to be done this way because he's coming, what, unto me. We got to remember that we are that living sacrifice and that we are serving God before him. And he don't want us to come any kind of way. Can I just put it like this? I feel my Holy Ghost now. When you think about a wedding, 
And I've been a part of a lot of weddings and performed many weddings and ceremonies and I've been a part of, and I, I even had a renewal back. Uh, I better get it right. I think my 30th uh, wedding, uh, we got a renewal. But I can remember my wife. I don't know if I can speak. I got one wife, 42 years. I can remember her coming down the uh, aisle. And she had this very, the first time, she wore this very beautiful, beautiful, very beautiful wedding gown that her mother made. Her mother made it. I mean, it was, looked like it was something bought from the store out of New York somewhere, New York City. And she wore that. It was so beautiful. No wrinkles, mm -hmm. no spots. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was beautiful from head to toe. Now, what if she would have came some other kind of way? I might have would have checked. I said, no, I don't, I, she ain't looking right. <laughs> she ain't looking right. You know, and she going to marry me? I'm going to be her husband? No, she ain't looking right. Sometimes, amen, when we think about this, sometimes God's people ain't looking right. Yeah. Now, we're talking about the outer appearance, but actually we're dealing with that heart. Yeah. Coming before God and coming before prayer, sometimes we ain't looking right mm -hmm. in the heart. Huh? Come on, talk to me now. So, so, mm -hmm. so these, these garments were to be consecrated. He was going to be anointed, and he may minister yeah. unto me, yeah. unto me, unto God, in the priest's office. Yes. This was an office. Mm -hmm. The priest, uh, uh, high priest, that was the office. Mm -hmm. And I was saying earlier that he had to have on special garment because he had some rank. Right. Now, Being go ahead. Set apart from the common people. That's it. That's it. Right. And when you look at law enforcement, when you look at the military, mm -hmm. they had special uniforms on yes. And it will tell to us, amen, they had a different rank from the rest of them. Now, you may look at the policemen. They may have a blue, blue shirt on. You say, well, they just an officer or a peace officer. But if you see a male or a female walk in with a white shirt on, they got some rank. That may be the captain. It may be the sergeant. It may be the lieutenant. Hmm? Amen. When even in the body of Christ, uh, we have certain colors that we, we have. Uh, you take the apostle, if he's a man in apostleship, he has on a fusion color or a reddish color. You take the bishop, the office of a bishop, he may have purple or plum shirt on. Sometimes you see me, I have a black suit on with a plum shirt or a purple shirt on. They say, I know, you know right away, I don't have to wear a badge, I don't have to put a sign on my back that he's a bishop, you know by the color. Come on now. Uh, 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 apostle don't have to have a sign on his back. He's a apostle. You know by the color. Come on now. If a man is an elder or, or a female is an elder, you know by the color. It's an office. When you look at the deacon in the New Testament, amen, there's a color for him. You know by the color, amen, because that's the rank that he's in, amen. And I've seen times where, where men, you know, they get called into the ministry, amen, and they run out and get a clergy shirt. They run, I've seen guys today, excuse Excuse me, they don't not even a bishop or hold an office as a bishop, and they got a red shirt, clergy shirt on, or a purple shirt, not even know the significance and understand the rank that you in. Y'all ain't gonna help me today. I'm helping somebody right now, but it's by the color. Amen. So everybody knew, God knew, the people knew, the the the, the Aaron's brothers knew by his garments. It, this was the uniform. That the man of God, that, that the high priest wore, this was his uniform. Everybody has a uniform. You go to McDonald's, they got a uniform, right? Uh, Chick-fil-A got uniforms on. Sometimes you go in some of these restaurants, they wear certain garments, amen, and you know that they was extinct from everybody else, that this is the waitress, amen. You know them by their color and by their attire and by their uniform. So the high priest had a uniform on. I hope I ain't taken off too far from you, Mr. Gene. You know, you, you jump good, in, you jump in, but it's good. Uh, uh, I was just going to say, uh, we, as you said, the priest, uh, his outfit was different. There were some similarities in the priest and the high priest. That's right. But there was four, at least four things that made him stand out, his outfit stand out. And like, like you said, also the high priest garments were... His, he, it was set apart to God and to reflect God's house. Mm -hmm. You know, and not to get off into the colors, but if you notice, the same colors that's on the high priest was the same colors that was in the tabernacle. Right. And they represented that's the right. house. That's right. Also, the high priest garments was to represent dignity and glory and beauty. 
even the garments that were that you couldn't even see with the eye. Amen. They represented purity and holiness. And we're gonna get into all the different materials and linens and what that stood for. But how does that relate to us as believers? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I want to read a couple of scriptures to Go you. Right here. Really, uh, and that's just saying, believers today, we're supposed to be set apart right. from the word by putting on Christ. Right. You know, he put these garments on, amen, to show that he was set apart. And we got to we gotta put on certain things to show that we are set apart in Christ, that we belong to Christ, and, that, and we ought to look like Christ and not the world. Mm-hmm. Not, you know, like you said back then, they only talked about the outside. But we're not, it wasn't just about the outside, but we ought to emulate righteousness, right. goodness, purity, and humility so that when the world look at us, who they see? They see Christ. Christ. That's right. These were, these were special clothing that the priest had to, had to wear to be in God's presence. Mm-hmm. He couldn't come in God's presence without these certain things. Now, uh, in Exodus 28, and I love the way the NLT put it, when we look at Romans 13 and 14, God tells us how uh, we as believ- believers ought to clothe ourselves today. And this way, I like it, you know, this cracked me up, and the way the NLT put it, <laughs> say, in, in the Galatians and NIV, NLT says in Romans 13 14, instead, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord, mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. And don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. Wow. And then in Galatians 3.26, in the NIV said, and this one's going to crack you up. For you are children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. And all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ like putting new clothes. Now, I realize that, I realize that some, things are pro- some things are a process, right? Yeah. But every day we should be pulling off. And, and putting, putting on. on. Pulling off and putting on. Am I right about That's that? right. Amen. So sometimes we get more concerned to the outside and, and what we're going to wear today. Our fit, what, our, our, what, what fit we're going to wear today. Right. We, we're concerned about the outside more than the inside. True. And how is it going and how, how are we going to look to other people rather than how we're going to look to God? Amen. So, but, but we're supposed to be trying to glorify God. Mm-hmm. Amen. So and now, uh, and one more an analogy. This is an awesome analogy. After the priests spent time in the tabernacle, their clothes would smell like frankincense. It would smell like the incense, the olive oil from the candlesticks. Well, we say, the, uh, not candle, because candles weren't even made back then, but the lamps and, and the flour from the showbread. In the same way, the more time we spend in God's presence, the more time we smell like Christ. Mm. The NLT puts it this way. 2 Corinthians, and this is the last scripture, 2 Corinthians 2, 14 through 16. Pay attention. But thank God, this is the way it reads, but thank God he has made us captives and continues to lead us along in Christ's triumphant procession. Now he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere like a sweet perfume. Our lives are a Christ, this verse 15, our lives are a Christ-like fragrance rising up to God. But this fragrance is perceived differently by those who are being saved and by those who are perishing. Verse 16, to those who are per- perishing, we are a dreadful smell of death and doom. But mm. to those who are being saved, we are a life-giving perfume. Come and on now. who is adequate for such a task as this? Yeah. That's awesome. Amen. We are sweet, sweet, sweet smelling sacrifice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. C- come on, give God a praise for Hallelujah. that right now. And I, I, I was thinking about mm-hmm. before we go on this next piece of the different garments mm-hmm. that you spoke of sanctification being set apart. Set apart. And actually it's in three phases. Yeah. And uh, when we deal with sanctification that we are saved. Yeah being saved, Mm -hmm. and one day we will be saved. saved. Amen. So it is a process. Process. And sometimes people look at it, he ain't right, he ain't that. Mm -hmm. But still, still God is working on us. us. Amen. Amen. We are God's workmanship. Uh Amen. And that's why we continue to study, read God's word, and so we can reach that point. Nobody's perfect, 
where we're reaching for perfection mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ and his word. You know how and we do? We, 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 we try to put on our clothes. We get in the mirror. We look this way. Uh -huh. We look that way. We say, oh, no, nah, this ain't going to work. Right. This ain't, I'm taking this off. Right. This ain't going to work. That's what we ought to be doing. That's right. Looking in the word of God. Oh, this, this don't work. Right. This don't work. I got to take this off. Take it off. And, and sometimes, let me tell you, sometimes on my way to church or sometimes even just going out, if I have a little spot on my pants, uh -huh. Come on. now you may not see it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you yeah. may not see that little spot on my shirt or, yeah. or that little dripping on my tie, uh -huh. but I see it. Yeah. See, I should see it, yeah. you know, but nobody else may not see it. Yeah. I said, I can't wear that tie. Okay. <laughs> I got to put that tie in the cleaners. Okay. I got to take that suit yeah. off, and I got a whole suit, yeah. but I got a spot on there. Yeah. But I'll take the whole suit off because yeah. I don't want to wear the pants with the spot on with the sport jacket. Okay. Y'all ain't talking to me, <laughs> man. But that just show you how you close, yeah. how close will we look at ourselves and the, our outer dress, yes. but we want to be looking at our inner dress yes. and how we're dressed yes. in our hearts yeah. before God. Yeah. You know, even me, I don't really like to come out, you know, like coming to church, you know, looking any kind of way. You know, not because of the people, because who am I representing? Christ. Who are we represent? I represent Christ. Amen. I think about, I think about um, um, Sister Dalton all the time. You know, I look up to her. You know, she always looked the kind. She always looked elegant. You know, you know, even though she had on a, a jean skirt, she always carried herself in an elegant way. You know, and, and you know because she represents somebody. I mean, I, I want to represent Christ in a good way. Mm -hmm. You can represent in a bad way. <laughs> but you can't represent him. Amen. You represent something else. But I want to represent Christ in a good way. In a good way. In Amen. a good And that's where the high priest, God wanted him to stand out. Yes. Uh, to yes. be eloquent. Mm -hmm. Because those type of garments, he said here in the verse number two, he said, for glory and, and for beauty. beauty. That's it. Beauty. Yes. He wanted him to be beautified. Mm -hmm in these garments when he walked around and when he came before uh, uh, the, the coming to the veil or came yes. to the temple amen it came to beautify as he came before God that he is somebody, somebody. and we are somebody uh -huh. in Christ uh -huh. amen don't let nobody talk you down like you ain't this and you ain't that but we are somebody in him mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus can somebody say praise amen. the Lord all right we got about we got a few more minutes we got a few more minutes, and um, and we're going to get about a few more minutes. Look at verse 4, 5, and 6. And I know we ain't going to finish this tonight, <laughs> and we're going to come back next week, and we're going to have to do part two because we only got a few minutes because we didn't hear a whole lot <laughs> talking about the garment mm -hmm. and how special it is for the high priest mm -hmm. to have these garments on mm -hmm. and how it represented Christ. Amen. Now, verse 4. Verse 4 said, and these are the garments mm -hmm. which they shall make. Uh -huh. These are the garments. Okay? okay, here we go. It says that a breastplate, mm -hmm. a ephod, mm -hmm. a robe, mm -hmm. a broderie coat, mm -hmm. a mentor, mm -hmm. and a girdle, and they shall make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, brother. Mm -hmm. and his, his son, sons. that he may, here it is again, to minister I mean. unto me yes. in the priest's office. Mm -hmm. These are the colors. Yes. They shall take gold, blue, mm -hmm. purple, scarlet, and fine, fine. linen. Now, let's just pause there. Go back to four. And I, what I would like for you to do, Sister Jean, uh -huh. is I'm going to read each piece, and you point it out. So okay. it won't be no confusion. Okay. Now, can you point them out? Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to read it, and you point it out. We're working together. Okay. Okay, you ready? I think. Well, I ain't got to think. I'm going to read it, okay, and you on. point it out. Read I'll it. help you. Okay. Now, hold on now. Hold on now. Okay. I want you all to know it's written that it's six pieces mm -hmm. that, that, that's, that's written in the Word. Six pieces or six pieces to his garment. Now, also, it's not... In scripturally, in this uh, text, there was also another garment, was called his britches, britches. Uh -huh. which is, like you know, is uh, yeah, basketball <laughs> shorts, or it's like you know, the brother and the men is almost like you know our underwear, yeah. and I'll go a little, <laughs> have a little fun with y'all, you know, as the brothers would say, you know, uh, 
is, is, is our draw. So <laughs> I was just having a little fun with y'all. But the priest had britches. You know, they used to use that term years ago, they, they did. Britches. They britches. Well, take them britches off. Yeah. Put them britches <laughs> on. Yeah. <laughs> you used to say that. But it's the under undergarment of it. Yes. But if you notice here that, that this priest has britches. You can see it right here, like like you say, like shorts, like basketball uh -huh. shorts, like the NBA oh, had those oh, long, man. those long uh, trunks on down to their knees. Uh -huh. it's, it's just like that, mm -hmm. and actually that was for modesty. Mm -hmm. But there was some more yeah. about that. Uh -huh. Now here we go. Right you gonna point it out for us? Okay. Cause we only got a few minutes, and we're gonna get this in real quick, and then we're gonna come back in our second part, and we're gonna talk about each. Uh, Pacific garment that Moses, that God told Moses that they should make. Okay. All right? Okay. Number one, he says, and these are the garments which thou shalt make. Breastplate. Here's the breastplate. Okay. Then you got the ephod. Ephod. The breastplate. Breastplate set on the ephod. Okay. A robe. This is the robe. Okay. A broader, broader coat. You got it? Okay. A mentor. I may Miter. be minor, I may be it's pronouncing right it wrong. This white piece here. And you got the girdle. And the girdle or sash. Right. It's called, it's called girdle. Sometimes sash. Sometimes sash. We refer right. to it as a belt. Right. Today. And they shall make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, and his son, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Then the other thing. The turban, isn't it? Turban? The turban. This is the turban. Right. And sometimes they call right that. Here. Right. Sometimes they call that. Okay. That the turban and. and what yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. You're right. Then verse 5, mm -hmm. remember six pieces to the garment, mm -hmm. seven when you add the britches. Then he tells them to make the colors will be gold, mm -hmm. blue, blue, purple. Okay. Oh, damn. Yeah, you see, here's some purple right here. All right. Here the purple. Okay. Here the gold, here the blue. Okay. Scarlet. Okay. And says gold, blue, purple, and scarlet, and fine linen. Fine, fine so remember, linen. we have six pieces plus um, the seven with the britches mm -hmm. and four colors. Mm -hmm. Four colors. You put that in your notes. Six plus, seven, plus one, mm -hmm. seven. Four colors would be gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and fine linen. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that God, amen, told mm -hmm. uh, Moses to tell the craftsmen or the centuries mm -hmm. or the men that were going to sew this up, put this together. This is how he wanted. He wasn't just throwing colors out there. That's right. All these colors meant something. Right. We, we have, we have, we got, I don't know, we're going to delve into that, but. Uh, we're going to, in this, the second part, we'll talk about. <laughs> The colors. The colors. <laughs> we might not God, even. God we got to talk about the, the pieces of garment. <laughs> right. And like I said, this is a whole it's lot. A, it's yeah. so, I ain't going to say it's deep, mm -hmm. but it's, it's enough that you, you need to take the time out and look at it, the significance of it, and the symbols of it, because it's, it's a lot of typology in this, and it's pointing to Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the church in the New Testament. Okay. So uh, we understand there's six pieces. The different pieces of the garment, mm -hmm. and understand there are the colors. Mm -hmm. Amen. So get that down. Put that in your notes. Amen. Our time is just about up. Amen. We got about two more. got about two minutes. Amen. We're going to have to wrap this thing up, mm -hmm. and we're going to come back on next Tuesday night, and we're going to talk about each piece of the garments that the high priest wore. Yeah. wore. Amen. They all had 
amen, a typology, amen, shadows of things to come. I'll tell you, my friend, uh, this has been a very exciting lesson, and I want you to join us, continue to follow us on Facebook Live and also YouTube.com. If you like to sow a seed, if you like to give your tithes and your offerings, amen, we will receive that. We'll give a five, or we may take it by, what is the platform that we have? Give a five as well as cash out. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can find us there if you'd like to sow a seed or yeah. give your tithe right. or give your offering. Amen. To continue mm -hmm. to support uh, this ministry at Greater Pentecostal Church of God. And we're so glad that we're able to come into your home to your place of business or wherever you may be. And even in this pandemic, you're not able to get out like you want to. And you know, they're changing restrictions and they're changing things, you know, week by week. And we don't know where we're going to be at. Amen. Next week, we all may be at home. Mm -hmm. They've been telling us, amen, Thanksgiving, you know, in, I think it's in in uh, California. They saying in California, they telling nobody, no, they shut down the churches, worship centers, they shut down the restaurant, they shut down everything telling the people to stay at home and let me tell you my friend this pandemic this virus is for real but we just gonna have to pray and ask God to help us give us strength plead the blood of Jesus and trust God like the preacher was talking about on Sunday just continue to trust God and believe God God gonna take us through this thing amen I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna come back on next week Amen. For another portion, amen, dealing with the garments of the high priest. Father, we thank you uh, today. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for this lesson, and we thank you for the ones that are, are here with us, and we pray that we will get something out of this. We will receive something out of this as we went into your word of God here on tonight, and I just thank everyone, amen, for joining in with us, even for that watch party, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you again, Evangelist Moore, amen, for your input. Once again, we'll see you next week in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen.